In a previous video, I took a look at a type of lamp called a Dubai lamp. And this lamp was a joint venture between Philips Lighting and Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the ruler of Dubai. And he would wanted a LED lamp that was extra efficient. He managed to get twice the efficiency of the lamps that we get. Um, and cool running and a very, very long life. And I took one of them apart. I took the 3 watt one apart and the circuitry was epic inside. It was really, really interesting. Um, I'll put a link down to that video so you can go and see that one if you want because uh, this reverse engine and this was a, a real treat. Everything was done in duplicate and uh, it had some interesting features to provide uh, smoothing of ripple. Very, very clever. But the main feature that makes these special is the fact that they use four times as many LED filaments as a typical lamp available to the rest of us. So say for instance, this is the type of lamp that we'd get, 2 watt lamp, uh, with two filaments, 1 watt each. This is a Dubai lamp, and it's a 1 watt lamp, but it's got four filaments, so actually quarter of a watt each, and that results in incredible efficiency in cool running. So I'm going to take this one apart, and the reason I'm going to take this one apart is because usually these lamps with the small bases really compromise in the circuitry, so I'm interesting, interested to see what Philips have done to cram the circuitry in here, if it's kept simple, like many of the sort of Chinese import lamps, or if they've done something clever. So let's start by trying these lamps out. I shall plug in the Bena cap holder, which is our standard holder here, into the hoppy, and I'll plug in our classic 2 watt LED lamp. And it draws about 2.36 watts of power, 19 milliamps, and roughly 0.5 power factor. Uh, notable when I take this off camera, you can see a strong flicker. If I take it off camera and shake it, I can see a very strong flicker as if there's no smoothing. Now let's try the Dubai lamp, the one watt one. So I screw it in. And it lights up a slightly colder warm white, but still, uh, what is the specification for that? Um, it is 3000K warm white, which is a sort of, it's, it's warmish. Uh, this one is drawing 1.2 watts, 9 milliamps, and again 0.5 power factor, which is calm. But when I take this off camera and shake it, uh, I don't see a visible flicker. You may get a visible sort of strobing, but that's purely the camera, the shutter, the rolling shutter effect that tends to have that effect in this because it's uh, doing snapshots of, in different positions of the uh, movement of the lamp. But certainly off camera, when I shake it, uh, I'm not getting any flicker at all, which is really impressive. That kind of suggests they must have an electrolytic smoothing capacitor in here. But how have they fitted the rest of the current limiting circuitry in? There's only one way to find out, and that's to open it. And this time, to appease those who don't like seeing me gouging at glass lamps with my bare hands, I shall put on a glove. A glove. And we'll rip this open, and then I shall explore the circuitry, I'll reverse engineer it and draw the schematic out. That's assuming I can. I'm not sure what's in there. Um, maybe they'll have some super dedicated circuitry. We'll find out, though. So, here's a lamp. I feel guilty taking this apart. Let's see if we can get the little pip out then first. This little uh, pip at the end usually just pops out. Now, uh, it's kind of pointless, really. I'm about to nibble into this with, uh, with my snips, if I can, because uh, it's quite small. This is where the lamp does actually break. And then I'm glad I had the gloves on. So I shall peel this open. And others have suggested that I could use a, a pipe cutter to open this, but the snips are fine. They do okay. Am I seeing anything interesting yet? Not a lot yet. Oh, it's uh, got heat shrink around it. That's why it's got black heat shrink inside. I think the other one had that as well. So these lamps uh, are not available to the rest of the world as such. They were made specifically in a special deal with the uh, the sheikh in Dubai, who rules Dubai. Well, I can see the smoothing capacitor. That's very interesting. And it's a shame because the lamps are very, very interesting. But it's one of those things that there is a possibility they may just be a wee bit too reliable. And as such, that they... Uh, 
they don't really want to sell them elsewhere. I know that sounds a bit conspiracy-ish, but um, it is how it is. They tend to bake the other LED lamps quite significantly. Okay, so there is my little sleeved module in there. Let's see how far I can get in. And see if I can nibble into this and reveal much to start off with. So it looks like I've got a round circuit board. With possibly a dropper capacitor. The little tiny, that's a weird bridge rectifier. And I'm seeing that anti-riffle circuitry again. That is very interesting. Okay, one moment please. I'm going to reverse engineer this and then we'll take a look at the circuitry. Okay, the reverse engineering is complete and I have to say it's very surprising because they've basically taken the circuitry out of the three watt lamp, I guess it's standard across the range, and the two watt lamp, I'm guessing, I've not opened that one yet. But uh, they've miniaturized it to fit into the one watt lamp. So let me show you initially the voltage across LED filaments because I've patched some leads onto this. And if I power the lamp on now, aside from the fact you wouldn't see any flicker, there's a reason for that. It's very clever. Uh, the voltage across the LEDs is about 228 volts. So that's kind of important for uh, when I show you the circuitry later. I shall disconnect this now since it's all full of live bits. So I shall put this out of the way. I shall put the meter out of the way. So that's the Cliff Quick Test out of the way. Disconnect the meter with its peculiar little clamps. And let's take a look at the circuit board. So the circuit board has a standard uh, metal film 220 nanofarad capacitor. It also has a 2.2 microfarad 300 volt capacitor. They're about of focus because they're sticking up off the circuit board. I was more interested in what's on the board. There's a 10 ohm resistor here coming on uh, from the live. And uh, you'll notice that these numbers are all back to front. The reason for that is simply because I flipped it. So we could actually compare it. Actually, you know, I can put them side by side, can't I? Let's get this matching like this. That's what we want. So there is the circuitry if you want to have a go at reverse engineering it yourself. Although, to be honest, a lot of the tracks are not visible um, because they're under that white uh, stuff. But in the back of the circuit board, we've got a little, little Zener diode, common to the other circuitry. We've got a, a, a 4.7 mega ohm resistor here and flipped a 4.7 mega ohm resistor here and a 360k resistor here. We've got the bridge rectifier. We've got a transistor, a, a MOSFET as it is, happens to be, and then a standard NPN transistor. That's more or less it, apart from these two resistors, 120 ohm and one with a standardized resistor color code of 750 ohms, which are actually in parallel. Oh, and this mystery capacitor down here, which is in parallel with this one, it was the same on the other ones. I think it may be to do with clipping spikes across this capacitor to actually protect it from damage uh, by using a low value ceramic capacitor across it. But that is just a theory. Right, tell you what, let's bring in the schematic. Um, right, I'll talk you through this. If you've seen the 3 watt one, this will suddenly seem familiar, including the correction to the mistake I made in the 3 watt one. Let me show you the 3 watt one right now and show you the mistake. I wrote 470k, that should have been 4.7 meg ohm, but I did correct that in the description. But that with the 3 watt one, 10 ohm resistor, dropper capacitor, including those uh, filter capacitors, rectifier, smoothing capacitor, everything's doubled up though in this one. And then it's got a little current regulator. I take this away and the circuitry looks very, very similar, but they've not doubled this stuff up because I guess ultimately they don't need to because it's very low power and also there's very little space. They've done an amazing job getting that into that base. Very, very clever. So what we have is a 10 ohm resistor to limit inrush current. Uh, that also acts as a fusible resistor. Uh, it also blows the R1, R2 reading out the window, but that's a completely different subject. We have the 220 nanofarad capacitor with the little snubber capacitor across that, and then we have the bridge rectifier. What that does, the 220 nanofarad capacitor, is and as the polarity of the mains changes, the AC, 
it allows a portion of current through on each half. And that current is then used to charge this capacitor. And that capacitor is then used to power these LEDs. But LEDs, the current can't flow through the LEDs immediately, though technically speaking, there's a 24 volts in here. I'm going to write 24 volts. I've not tested that, but the other one was. Um, but when you power it up, current flows through this bridge divider of resistors. And it's designed to have a very high resistance at the top and a very low resistance at the bottom because it's driving a MOSFET, which is uh, virtually no current flow in the, the gate. It's a capacitive uh, type transistor. So um, the choice of those resistors is to keep the voltage on the gate lower than uh, the point it could suffer damage. But uh, that turns the MOSFET on. Current starts flowing through the LEDs and through the, these resistors. And that's where you've got these two odd values of resistors, a standard 120 ohm and the strange 750 ohm. But when you combine them together, you end up with 103 ohms. And they've put two in parallel to fine tune that value. The current flows through, when it reaches a certain threshold, the voltage across these resistors rises up high enough that it, when it gets to 0.6 volts, then this transistor turns on and starts shutting the MOSFET down. And as such, this circuitry here creates a very, very simple current regulator. And I initially thought it was just to compensate for, well, it does, it compensates for slight fluctuations in the supply when things like compressors kick in or other high loads. But also, because the uh, capacitor here takes the full wave rectified mains supply and then it uh, smooths it, there's always going to be that slight ripple on top. And this circuitry here is actually operating within that ripple. That's why there's no flicker or shimmer or anything. It's very, very clever. Um, so the capacitor's dropping the main current. This is uh, just regulating, well, in the last one, it, the three watt one, it was something like five volts across it on average. But that will fluctuate depending on uh, what's actually happening, the voltage the main supply goes to. But um, it potentially it gets rid of that ripple by just mod modulating the current and keep keeping current constant. There is this 24 volt zener across it. Maybe that's in case this fails. Maybe it's in case... Uh, it just basically the voltage exceeds the rating of this circuitry and it's just a protection for that. Very neat. And that's it. Now I've explained it, if I put the 3 watt one back, then you'll see that all they've done, they've got the two resistors match for a lower value here, 31 ohms. So everything's kind of multiplied by 3, so that comes up to, well, that would come up to about 93 ohms in the case they've chosen 103 ohms. They've got two capacitors, they've got the 2 times 330 nanofarad, which gives 660. This is 220, so that was 3 watt. This is uh, 1 watt, and that fits. It suggests that the 2 watt LED lamp is potentially going to have a couple of 220 nanofarad capacitors in it. Not really sure. Uh, let me know if you want me to open this one and uh, reverse engineer it, because uh, I think it might be, I think it might ultimately be this circuit board that's in it, uh, but with different component values. I think they'd change the value of these resistors and they'd change the value of those capacitors and I think that's more or less all it would be. The LEDs, the LED filaments, all four of them are in series. They add up to 228 volts as you saw earlier on. That's four times 57 volts with 57 volts per filament and each one is 21 LEDs which gives 2.7 volts which is typical of LEDs running at that sort of low current and they are running at very low current. But that's it. It's very neat. It's really, I wasn't expecting that. That explains why there's no flicker because they have jammed the whole circuit board effectively of the uh, three watt one, but without the component duplication, they've just used single components and they fitted more or less the same circuitry in that tiny space of the small Edison screw, um, screw cap, the lamp cap. But that's it. It's very interesting. That was a uh, that was very pleasant actually because these lamps, the Dubai lamps, are really well designed. Um, so I shall link to the three watt uh, teardown, the one where I looked at the other lamps and introduced them and did the full reverse engineering. But just keep in mind that the, those resistors four point point seven mega ohm, not four seventy k, as I wrote. I originally thought because the way I was testing it, I was getting diodes in circuit that 
I didn't realise that was a MOSFET. Um, and I th it would have made more sense if they'd been 470k if it hadn't been a MOSFET. But there we go. Interesting stuff. That was a, a treat. The Dubai lamps have definitely been very, very interesting. So, um, yes, that was fun. That was well worth taking apart.